Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Yankee Stadium. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Today is Monday, August 19th, and another tough loss for the Yankees that can be squarely blamed on the Yankee bullpen. The Yankees had a lead in a game in which they faced the probable American League Cy Young Award winner in Tariq Skubal, and once again, they blew it. Clay Holmes now has 10 blown saves, leads the American League. Now, even if you spot him five blown saves, right? Let's just say that you cut it in half, and he has a normal amount of blown saves for a closer. Well, damn, this team would have 78 wins, and you'd have a nice, comfortable lead in the American League East. That's why I get ticked off when people say, oh, it's just one game, or you know, be patient with him, or whatever. These games add up, and over the course of the season, it can really make the difference between a first-place team and a wild card team. It's never a good idea to just ignore a problem and hope that it goes away. If you were driving your car and you had the check engine light come on, you're probably going to take it to the mechanic and see what's wrong. You're not going to say, well, whatever, that light doesn't mean much. It's just a light. We'll ignore it and see what happens. That would be a really irresponsible thing to do. The Yankees have the check engine light on right now. Despite their great record, they should be better because they don't have a closer. They keep running Clay Holmes out there, and he keeps blowing saves because he allows too many hits. He hits too many bats, and it's time to make a change. I know it's not going to be comfortable. I know that he's not going to be happy about coming out of the closer role and losing that job as he approaches free agency. But you have to think about the team, not anyone's individual ego. So let's take a look at some people that could step in. The first guy that I want to talk about is somebody that we mentioned last night on the podcast, and that is Tommy Canely. He has appeared in 36 games this season. He's thrown 31 innings, so he should be mildly fresh. 34 strikeouts, 1.74 ERA on the season. He's been throwing the ball a little bit better as of late. Luke Weaver. 30 years old, 66 and a third innings pitched already, so he's been used heavily. He's got 72 strikeouts, so more than a strikeout per inning. 0.935 whip, or walks and hits per innings pitched, so less than a base runner per inning. 3.39 ERA, so it's a little bit higher than Clay Holmes, but he's been hammered a couple of times. Mostly he's been you know, pretty reliable. Michael Tonkin, 36 games. 3-2 and two record, 2.72 ERA, 52 and two-thirds innings pitched, 52 strikeouts. Clay Holmes, 2.88 ERA, 50 innings, 56 strikeouts. The whip is 1.3. He's got one of the higher whips on the team. So you want your closer to allow the least amount of base runners on the staff, basically, because you want to eliminate opportunities for the lucky bounce or you know the the dying quail kind of hit or the ground ball with eyes to change the game. You know, Jake Cousins, 25 and two thirds innings pitched, 0.935 whip, so another whip under one. Tim Hill, he's got a whip of 1.192. All these guys are better than Clay Holmes in terms of allowing base runners. Um, You know, you got Ian Hamilton coming back, but he was not off to a great start. His whip was 1.584, so I'm not comfortable throwing him right back into the closer role. You know, Nick Birdie, he's only thrown nine and two-thirds innings this year. His whip is 1.448, ERA 1.86. Now, he could be a good high-end reliever at the end of the game once he settles in and stays healthy because the stuff is terrific, but he's also had issues staying healthy. Mark Leiter Jr., He's got a 6.48 ERA since coming to the Yankees and a whip of almost 2.5. It's 2.4. So 2.5 base runners per inning is not ideal. You know, we talked about uh, Clayton Beater. He's out for the season. Jonathan Loisaga's out for the season. They already got rid of De Los Santos. I don't know if there's a great solution. I think right now Tommy Canely is probably the guy that I would go with. I think I would just... Hand Tommy Canely the keys and say, hey, look, you're our new closer. Try not to mess it up. I think fans are kind of taking this hard 
You know, these are the worst kind of losses that you can have. Usually after a couple of blown saves, I start getting calls every time that Clay Holmes blows one and people go berserk in the voicemails. But it's almost like you guys have gotten used to it. We didn't get many voicemails about Clay Holmes last night. We got a couple. But I think most people have just realized what we all realize, which is that this guy's got to lose that job. I'm, I'm sorry you hate to see anybody lose any kind of job, but you know he can still be an effective middle reliever, just can't be the closer. Not on a team with championship aspirations. So we're going to take some voicemails. We've got another ad today, too, uh, but we'll, we'll get to your voicemails and um, talk about this rough, rough loss to the Tigers. I live in New York City! I cannot believe you had the balls to do it. I was just thinking, with this, with Better Ice struggling and the DGMA, you also struggling right now. And I was worried Cabrera heating up, and I was worried Peraza getting some playing time, and eventually Jackson Jr. is going to be coming back. Could we see Cabrera play first? Because he can play anywhere. He can play first base, second base, anywhere. He can play the outfield. I think he can even play catcher or something like that. Maybe not, but yeah. Could we see Cabrera play first? And Peraza or Chisholm be playing third. I could definitely see that happening. One of the things I love about Oswaldo Cabrera is how versatile he is. He came up as a shortstop. He immediately moved to the outfield. He did a great job in right field. You might recall his outs above replacement when he first got called up to the major leagues as an outfielder was tremendous. Last season, he was the Yankees' opening day left fielder. This year, he's played a majority of his games at third base. He's also played some second base. I have no doubt that he could play first base effectively, and he's been hitting the ball a little bit better. I love what we're seeing from Oswaldo Cabrera. I think he is emerging as a good major league hitter. He's hitting over 300 for the last you know 20 games or so, and I feel like he's finally got the confidence to take over a position. Now, whether or not the Yankees will let him do that, we'll see. Ben Rice has really been struggling. He's got the average under 200. The Yankees have stopped playing him against lefties, and I think we're going to see him go down, back down to the minors at some point. Uh, but, you know, I like his swing. I like the way that Rice takes pitches, and he's obviously got some power with the three home run game. He's the reason I'm bald. But uh, we got to get a little bit more production. And I think Oswaldo at first base and, you know, Peraza at third base could be the ticket. Hey, Derek, it's Elaine from Mississippi. Uh, congrats on the success recently, man. You deserve it. Um, really pulling for you. Keep up the good work. Um, two out of th- losing two out of three to the Tigers really sucks. I know that they had the top ten team ERA, and they threw all their best stuff, and we saw it, and it just didn't happen. My homes has the most blown saves out of the entire league. And it's a matter of time before Boom wakes up. I mean, y'all expect him to bash his closer and press and stuff. He's not going to do that, okay? So, but it is, it's just getting old because it, we're just playing the same song and expect different dance moves. And it's just, it's not happening. I agree with you that Aaron Boone is not the type of manager who is going to publicly eviscerate his closer. He's just not that type of manager. And I don't think it would help Clay Holmes. It's not a matter of Clay Holmes needing motivation. I think Clay Holmes wants to be a great closer. It's a matter of his stuff not translating to that position. Look, when you've got such a narrow margin for error, you just can't have somebody who puts runners on base at the rate that Clay Holmes does. He gives up way too much contact. Everybody knows that sinker is coming, and all you got to do is put the bat on it. He throws so hard, it's going to lead to some doubles. It's going to lead to some singles. It's going to lead to base runners. And when he's not locating it, he walks too many guys. So that combination makes him extremely volatile as a closer. We've talked about it ad nauseum, and I don't know how much more we can say. I think it was kind of a dereliction of duty by Brian Cashman to not add further swing and miss stuff at the deadline. You look at the two guys he went out and got, other than Jazz Holm, Jazz Chisholm, uh, you look at the pitchers, You know, Mark Leiter Jr. has been awful, 
and De Los Santos is already off the team. So I think that Cashman deserves a little bit of the blame, but Aaron Boone has to grow some cojones here and you know not worry about Clay Holmes' feelings and do what's best for the ball club. Quick word from the sponsor of today's voicemail show and then back with a few more voicemails. Hey, FT fam, it's Alana Rizzo. I can't stop talking about Viore. Viore is perfect if you are sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. I wear Viore in all settings, not just in the gym, because honestly, it's comfier than whatever you're currently wearing. No joke. I'm wearing Viore daily leggings right now. They're high-waisted with the drawstring and cupped ankles. They look good and they feel great. You're going to love them. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viori.com slash foul. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash foul. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to viori.com slash foul and discover the versatility of Viori clothing. How many games does Clay Holmes have to blow before he's taken out of the closers role? Just curious. This is the 10th game I believe he's blown. How many of those games have we won and lost? That's what I would like to know. Because that's how much distance there'd be between us and the Orioles in the division right now. He is so bad, dude. I did a quick run through of his game logs, and I could be off on this because I haven't had my morning coffee yet. But it looks like of his 10 blown saves, we've lost nine of them. So, you know, we could have a very healthy lead in the division. And you know that the Yankees staff and their front office know this. The players know this. Of course, they're going to vocally support their teammate, their player, Clay Holmes. But the time for training wheels is over. The time for coddling is over. We've got to get a real closer in there ASAP. Yeah, Derek. Robert from New Jersey here. Yeah, tell you the truth, tonight's game didn't even upset me that much because I knew when he, when he came in, he was going to fuck it up. Excuse the French, but I'm sorry. I told I told my buddy, I was texting with a buddy in my time, of mine at the same time, and I told him, this game's over. He's going to blow it. We're losing in extra innings. That's all there is to it. We got a few calls like this. Has anyone ever told you, by the way, that you sound a lot like John Heyman? Because you do. Oh, hi, Derek. This is Hugh from Bay Ridge. And this is personal. This is about Lou Elizondo. I know you're a big UFO guy. He's supposedly going to be on CBS this morning at 9 o'clock, talking about his new book, Imminent, releasing tomorrow. I've ordered it from Amazon. And then he's going to be on Friday night at 10 o'clock, on News Nation with Banfield for the whole hour talking about his book. So uh, just a little update there for you. I think that would interest you as would anybody really that's into UFOs. I appreciate that. And by the way, when you guys call into this voicemail, it doesn't just have to be Yankee talk. You can drop whatever you want. Talk UFOs, talk whatever you want, movies, whatever you want to talk to me about. This is your show. It's for the fans. So Feel free to call in and say whatever you want. I'll definitely check out the Lou Elizondo thing. I feel like, I don't know, I I find a little bit of difficulty in believing some of the things that that guy says. I don't know. He just, my BS detector goes off a little bit with him and with David Grush. But I want to see an actual alien before I, uh, I, I get too hyped about it. Hey, Derek. Nick from South Carolina. Just calling after I watched the game and uh, thought I'd share my views. Um, Clay Holmes strikes again, as we all know. I knew it the minute they brought him in. I said, here you go. Here goes the game, you know. Um, I thought we actually had a chance, and then um, they brought a lighter in, and he just kind of sealed the deal. Um, You know, I wanted to say one thing about our bullpen. We only have two guys that uh, have been consistently um, doing well. Um, and that's Tompkins and uh, Walker, and, that, and that's it. Um, the rest of them, <clears throat> I wouldn't give you a dirty dime for. I mean, they're just um, they're just inconsistent. I mean, I, I don't want to say they they suck, but they're just very inconsistent. And you, you're not going to get through the postseason 
with that bullpen. I've been saying this for, for over six weeks now. It's just not going to happen. Um, I know I uh, keep referring back to, you know, when I was guys like in your age group, but the one thing I will say is we saw real solid bullpens back there, so we know what it looks like. We recognize it. It's, you know, it's apparent to us. This is not uh, anywhere near a solid bullpen or a solid starting pitching staff. You've got a couple guys on our starting pitching staff that you don't know one day to the next what they're going to do when they get out there. I hear you. Inconsistency is frustrating. And really it's something that the Yankees player development has to own a little bit too. How come we're not calling up these guys that can throw 98, 99 miles an hour and spot it with a nasty pitch? We seem to be pretty good at finding these diamonds in the rough for other teams and maximizing their ability. How come we can't do that with our internal guys? It's frustrating, and I don't blame anyone who's upset and who's been frustrated by watching this team lately. You just have to hope they figure it out, because we didn't bring in the necessary pieces to fix the problem. So, you know, maybe Hamilton coming back, he catches fire, but like you said, I think that this team's in real trouble when you get to the playoffs and you got some close games. It's always close games in the playoffs, and you need a lights-out bullpen. Hey, what's going on, Derek? Um, it's uh, Monday morning. Um, I'm just over here trying to chill in my car, man, and something just popped up in my head that really bothered me, and that is we are still in just a, a battle with the Baltimore Orioles in trying to get this uh, this, this, this seed locked up for the AL East. Um, we're, we're watching scores and we're, you know, we're kind of monitoring and, and kind of just biting our nails here on what is our destiny, right? And what I'm bothered the most is, is, is that we had nine to ten games that we were ahead of, of where, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a one run game, it's a, it's a couple run game where we mustered up those runs just for those games to be blown away out the water by a guy that we should have known by blown save number four, number five, that he, he's not a closer. This Clay Holmes is not a closer. And what is, what is it that, what is this that Boone just loves so much that just tells him, Hey, you know, <laughs> He, uh, yeah, he's blown nine, nine, nine games, right? But let's let's get him out there again, right? Let's let's, let's get him out there again and 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 finish this one up. As we're in a just a a a, a battle with with the Orioles right now, and so it's just very frustrating. And I, I are, are we still going to have him closed, or or is this now? I mean, this is ten blown saves here, the most in the MLB. Like, if that doesn't tell you anything. It's, he's not him. He's not a closer. I appreciate the call, and I don't see any possibility that the Yankees are going to change it anytime soon. We're so far into the season, and Aaron Boone is going to stick with his guy. And we do not have defined roles in that bullpen, and Clay Holmes is not a closer. I mean, it's just as simple as that. We've beat it to death. The horse is now glue. And we just need to get over it and just, I mean, I know hope is not a good strategy, but we just need to hope it gets better. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and give us a subscribe. It helps other Yankees fans find the channel. We're also on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media. Join the community. Have some fun. We're here after every game. This is Pinstripe Territory.